Hi there. So today I want to show you how you can go about learning your first scale ever. Because I'm pretty sure you spent some time looking at those scale diagrams on the web and you tried to, you know, play those dots like... And it didn't sound anything like when your heroes do it. So that's what we're here to fix now. And hopefully uh, it'll be an eye opener so that you can actually start playing some music within your scales and not just play like your... Uh, sound like you're playing memorized dots. So I'm Christopher Dahl and I'm very happy to be hosting this session where hopefully we'll make some serious guitar gains. Okay, so um, a lot of you guys, uh, I'm sure, have Googled for scales online and you've found people recommending the pentatonic scale. Uh, this is a very cool scale because uh, it can pretty much take you from being a bedroom guitarist to being a pro. And, you know, it's, it's, it's used all the time. So you really don't have to, uh, you know, really don't have to learn anything after that unless you really want to because that scale has all the strong notes in it but the problem is when you're you know searching for scales and when you're trying to learn scales uh, often you're presented with a boring and static scale diagram you know something like and that kind of scale diagram doesn't give you any kind of information as to how to play those notes, the timing of those notes, how to phrase those notes, whether you can add some extra notes in between to make it sound better, whether it's okay to play several notes at the same time, basically play chords within the scale, nothing like that. So there's a lot of information missing when you're looking at that kind of scale diagram. And it isn't very helpful if you're just starting out and try to figure things out to only be presented with like partial information. And that's what we're gonna fix today. And I'm gonna give you some hands-on examples of how you can make that kind of thing sound more like something that resembles music a bit more. But first of all, you might be asking yourself, why even learn scales? I'm a beginner, I can barely play an F major chord. Well, here's the thing, scales are not only good for soloing, they are also awesome for creating interesting chords, passages between chords, chords embellishments, chords bass lines, a lot of cool stuff. So in other words, if you're a beginner and you only can play two chords, a scale could make those two chords come to life. For example. Right, that's much more interesting than just doing. Now, what did I use? Well, I used a scale in between those chords. So there are a lot of examples where. Where scales is really what you need for your playing to come to life. That's why I think this lesson is so important. Uh, it can really open up a world of opportunities without you even having to learn anything drastically new. You don't have to, you know, learn that dreaded F major chord. You can stick to just the chords you know and... and add scalar notes in between. You really can benefit from learning scales. Okay. So I've given you a bit of context. I've teased you with what we're gonna do. Let's actually do it. So I'm gonna start with the first pentatonic box, which is likely the one you're gonna encounter when starting out. And it's a great one, uh, simply because it's easy to visualize. All the notes on the fifth fret are gonna be played. So this is your fifth fret. So we're gonna start here. Eighth fret, five. Eight, five. Seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, eight, five. Okay, so you notice they were all fives there, right? And then we had eight, five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, eight, five. Okay, that's it. Those are the notes. Those are the boring dots to memorize. 
that's basically the thing that got you turned off to start off with. So uh, those are just places to put your fingers. Again, they give you no information about the music or anything like that. So is there anything we can do with these notes in order not to be totally turned off right away? Well, it turns out there is, and there is some easy stuff you can do. For example, you could, instead of just playing each note once and really make it sound like a boring computer, why not play some notes twice or thrice? <laughs> we could do... I don't know if it's gonna change the world, but it's a lot more interesting than... So just playing... Why not? That's a good start, and it's something everybody can try. Obviously, if you can play, you're also gonna be able to play. But is there anything more we can add to this? Well, I was thinking, why are we just constantly going down like that? Down, 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 down. Couldn't we possibly go up? Yeah, I went down and I went up. But what if I combine this with the doubling of notes? How would that sound? Okay, I'm going down, huh? Well, that's something. So hold, hold, there, hold it there. Uh, what am I doing, right? I'm going down and then I'm going up. That might be confusing to you. So going down means going down in pitch, right? So we're actually going up on the guitar. A bit confusing, but you can hear the pitch is going down, right? So this is down, and then we can go back up. Now it gets more interesting if you kind of combine those more frequently and not just play the scalar position all the way down, and then when you reach the end of the guitar, that's when you start going up again. Why? Well, this is gonna sound like your average exercise, and that's really what we wanna stray from. So, just to recap, I started by saying, well, you can play several notes at the same time. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, now, let me just see here, yeah. Now, you could also change direction. So we did this. Also interesting. Why not? This allows me to start kind of walking around a little bit of, on the guitar and making it sound less boring. But we're not quite happy there, are we? There must be more things we can do. Hmm. There are many more things we can do, but what I did there is not one of them. We can get obviously very fancy here and start playing chords, start doing all sorts of things, uh, but I don't really think it's a priority for you at this point, because uh, that kind of thing is not very beginner friendly and there's just a major risk that's gonna turn you off if you attempt to play something that's too difficult. But I will say this, um, there's something very easy we can throw in that is gonna give you variation. So why do we have to constantly play all those notes the same way? Couldn't I do? That's an easy way you can throw in some variation just by using different power of picking there. Now you're gonna have to be a little bit careful there because it's easy to totally miss the string. Uh, but I think it's a good thing to be aware of from scratch that what you do with your right hand matters. It matters even more if you're amplified, uh, but uh, I mean, the difference is huge. I mean, we can take a, like a basic example, right? If I'm doing this.
right? And the same is reflected when playing scales. We should and we can throw in all these different variations. And let's face it, everybody's playing the same five notes. SRV is doing it, was doing it, Jimmy was doing it, you know, Van Halen, Kirk Hammett, Ingve. All of them use the pentatonic scale all the time, yet they sounded so different. So those five notes can be made totally different depending on what you do with them. And here's a great example of that. The harder you hit, the more different it's gonna sound, right? Now, if that's difficult to you, uh, you can throw in a more, I would say, simple uh, variation here, and that is to not play evenly in the scale. It's very tempting to just play every note like and then Chris told you to play two notes so you're doing Chris told you to change direction so you started doing so that's all fine but it's played very evenly right so what can we do more well we could rest on a note let it ring how would that sound Oh, and all of a sudden we have a phrase, we have a musical phrase. We have something that doesn't sound like a predictable computer. Very cool. So just to recap here, what have we been speaking about? Well, we've spoken about the importance of scales and how they can help you even if you only know two chords. We've spoken about how memorizing or visualizing these dots on the fretboard is not the same thing as playing them in a musical manner. And I've given you some concise tools that you can use in your first scale to make it sound more like music. More specifically, these tools involved repeating notes, so not just playing one no uh, or each note once, like we started repeating, we started doing. They involve changing direction, so you're not always playing down, 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 down. Oh, we reached the end of the guitar, let's do up, 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 up. So we could do that more frequently, make it sound more interesting, go down and then go we spoke about the, the, the importance of dynamics, how you hit the string, that affects the tone. You can do... It's a bit of a pro tip for you right there. And we also spoke about how you can rest, let the notes rest. It gives you more time to think, it offers variation without really coming up with anything new or innovative. You could just... Instead of just constantly playing... Like that. So a lot of cool things there that are right under your fingertips if only you are aware of them. So next time you play a scale I strongly advise you to not just play it up and down. You can start by visualizing it, that's fine, but as soon as you know where the dots are start applying these tricks, start being creative with these notes so that they start sounding like you playing them and not them playing you. So it's been awesome to have you here. I've been Christopher Dahl, and I'm so happy you chose to join me here. Um, I will be doing more of these, so be sure to uh, follow me here on YouTube and of course also on the GMC website where you will find more detailed tips and tips in larger quantities. Just imagine if these four tips can take you to another level. What are you gonna do with another 40 tips? That could turn you into the pro you're looking to become. So I'm really hoping to see you again, and I want to thank you for tuning in. Have a good one. Cheers.